Wonderful. Here we go. So thank you everyone for being here with Sarah and I. We wanted to talk about um, a topic close to heart, especially as we move towards the holiday season, where it's often a lot about spending and doing. And for many of us, it can feel like overspending or overdoing with the kind of resources we have at hand, even our energy resources. And so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Joanna. I work with all the invisible patterns we inherit from our family, and that definitely shapes our relationship with money. I call it our inner relationship with money. You know, it's not about how we budget or what we might save or do. It's a lot about the inner landscape of how we hold money inside. And I'm so happy to be here with Sarah, and I'll let her introduce herself to, before we dive in. Yeah, so I'm Sarah, and I am an entrepreneur. I work closely with people to help get them going from dream jobs to growing their own business. Um, I'm also a lawyer, so I spend a lot of time working with papers and money and um, strategizing and just building some creative solutions to making businesses operate. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, Sarah has really impressed me with some of the things that she does with her clients around creative strategies for saving, even paying down debt. And we wanted to share a few of those things with you today around the topic of the holidays. So I sort of joked with Sarah that for me, the, it feels like the holidays come around again so quickly. It's like, oh, weren't we just here? You know, and we sort of have to ramp up and, and get ready back into action. Um, so for many of us, the holidays bring along with it things that can feel kind of unresolved and expectations. And so we wanted to look at that today with, the two, with everyone here, how those expectations can maybe lead us to spending more than we're ready, able to even sometimes, giving more time, energy, sometimes even love in some of the more complicated relationships. And so we had, we talked to you a few strategies that we wanted to share with you about making the holidays count for what they're really, really about, simplifying things and making sure you've got lots of joy in the season for you. So how would you like to kick things off, Sarah? What do you think we should start with? There was so much that we talked There's about. There's a lot. Well, I'm kind of curious, and you guys can just raise your hands or say aye. Uh, how many of you feel this pressure to overspend or the expectation that you, yeah, yeah, getting that. Um, and how many of you are just kind of overwhelmed by the concept of spending during the holidays? Mm. Anyone feel that? Yeah, I do too. Definitely. So much, right? So we wanted to talk a little bit about first steps. Right. And if you haven't already started your Christmas budget, um, now's the time or holiday budget. Now's the time. Alternatively, if you've already started it, these are just some little tips that you can do to make sure that you don't overspend. So one of my favorite ways to save and to spend is to create separate bank accounts. Mm -hmm. And this is really easy now with the amount of online bank systems that there are. Um, Joanna uses one called Tangerine. Yeah. I use one. It's Alliant Credit Union. Um, it's online. It's a free account. And they also offer up to like five checking accounts and 10 savings accounts. Mm. And you can name each of them. And what I really like about this is it gives you the opportunity to set up a checking or a savings account just for the holidays. Mm -hmm. And with my other clients, I say, you know, do this also for emergency and vacation and have separate accounts. But for the holidays, I set up a savings account specifically for the holidays. I label it holidays and I put a certain amount in there. And what you can do now is set up a specific account or if you don't feel like you have the time to do that, create a budget that is reasonable with your actual budget right now, right? Not overspending and decide that that is the amount you're going to be spending. And another tip to do this, if you don't want to set up a separate account is to use cash only. Mm -hmm. Using cash really does something to us psychologically where we don't overspend because you get to the register and you're like, Oof, is this really worth my $20 bill? <laughs> 
So create a budget right now using your current budget that you have as an outline. We don't want you to be taking money from rent or food or your savings and putting that into holidays. Holiday budget should be separate and should be excess. It shouldn't be something that you're, you know, not being able to pay your mortgage on time. Exactly. That is such a good tip. I've employed that strategy for years now and I'm so grateful when that credit card bill comes in. I've done a little bit of online shopping so far. It's like, oh, I'm covered. We've got this as a buffer and because it hasn't hurt all the year through. You just put a little bit aside building up for the holiday season that's here again already somehow. Yeah. Go ahead, Sarah. Well, and some other creative tips just in terms of actually spending is think about where you might already have money, right? Or currency. So like your points or your miles from your credit cards. I know I can turn in a certain amount of my credit card points for gift cards or for gifts. And so that's what I've done is I've actually turned in my points and gotten gift cards out of the deal. And I'm able to give that to, you know, my niece who really just wants a gift card for her holiday present. Um, but then also getting creative. So Joanna and I talked a lot about how each of us has an abundance and we really need to get creative with how we can use that abundance that we have of creativity and energy and use that as a gift. So planning events, maybe a scavenger hunt for, you know, your kid or um, a concert. I know Joanna is, is giving a concert to her husband as a gift. So using something that's a little bit more creative as an opportunity as a gift. Does anyone have any ideas that they can think of that are kind of creative as far as gift giving goes? I'll just unmute everybody because you're getting a little bit of feedback. And the idea was that I think for me was that those dollars were already going to be spent. Oh, we got the feedback back. Those dollars were already going to be spent, and so why not give it as a gift for something we can do together and look forward to? So it's just kind of repurposing the way we're already used to spending. And maybe if there's something you'd like to contribute or a question, just raise your hand so we can see you and we'll unmute you one at a time. Perfect. We just I really it. like Groupon personally. So mm -hmm. I tend to get like, you know, fun gift ideas from Groupon because, you know, not only can you get cool stuff from Groupon, but you can get cool events or gifts. So, you know, I've gotten my mom a massage for the holidays from Groupon and it was a really nice spa but you know, it was only $35 instead of $70. So think creatively about what's out there and how you can make sure that you're not overspending, but also giving something that's meaningful. Well, and I think what's great about that suggestion is it also elicits memories. So using the Groupon idea, I didn't even know there was this big trampoline park in our area, but it was $40 an hour to go jump on the trampoline with my son times two would be $80. And so they were offering a half off. So it's like, oh, that's something we could do over Christmas holidays, um, create some memories, have some laughs, and still within the budget of what's reasonable to go and have some fun together. Yeah. Who here has kids? Can we get a raise of hands? Or you can even put in the chat. I know Leslie does. Yeah. Okay. Megan, you do too? All right. Yeah. Kids can be they can have these expectations, right? Of what the holidays mean to them. And really at the end of the day, what's important is the memory because mm -hmm. I think that's what we as adults remember about the holidays, right? I don't really remember the gifts I got as a kid, but I do remember spending time with my parents and going ice skating and things like that. That's it. For me, it was always baking cookies with my mom and, you know, putting, we would do little platters and gift boxes and we would take out to aunts and uncles. And that's, that really what, that's what feels like Christmas to me, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Does anyone have traditions like that, that they think the group could benefit from? Um, I mean, it's not so much traditions, I guess, just, I love making things. So if it's baking, if um, 
I do a bit of energy work if it's offering someone, you know, Reiki session, if it's, um, yeah, what a great gift. yeah, so yeah, just whatever I already have in terms of resources. Um, when I've been ambitious, I've knit things. And so I think it's just, yeah, for me, it's like, there's something joyful about making something. Yeah. And I, I also really encourage that because especially with adults, you know, if you're going to give a gift to, let's say a colleague or your neighbors um, or a dear friend, you know, I don't need any more stuff. I think you guys are probably similar, right? Like I don't need anything, but if I get a homemade pie, <laughs> oh my goodness, like that is an amazing gift. So Really, you know, think about those things. Like you said, baking or a Reiki session. Oh, if someone gave me a Reiki session for the holidays, I would be overjoyed. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that's really important, using what you have. I sometimes give, like, contracts out. I do contract work as a lawyer. And so for, you know, some of my friends who I know are starting businesses, I say, hey, like, happy birthday. I'll make three contracts for you. <laughs> that's a really good deal. You know? <laughs> We've got some people chiming in in the chats around making Christmas ornaments for sure. How memorable. And then each year, you know, it's something to put on the tree and, and think about that generosity and that connection. And yeah. Then, and then this calendar. I love that idea. Yeah. In just $10. That's great. And you got the savings and the memorable. That's, that's quite the combo. Yeah, definitely. And the, I think it leads me into one of the things I wanted to be sure not to forget to share today is I think a lot of that inner money relationship can come from this feeling of, I don't have enough. And so if it feels like we're entering into the holidays with some sentiment around that, um, it can feel really challenging of how do we stretch maybe a more limited budget than we're used to or that we would ideally like. And so that's where these creativity ideas come in. Or how do we give time? How do we give an experience? Um, how do we really connect? And for so many, you know, I'm thinking of aunts and uncles and certainly my grandfather, like Sarah said, they don't need anything, but how much they would love um, for me to take time out of, you know, my schedule and just sit and bring you know, some nice tea over or their favorite coffee. And it's really about the visit and time spent together. And so whether it's a handmade gift for you, if you like to do that, the crafty thing, that was, those are great examples, or just the time spent. It, I think that can be, can go so much further than we ever realize. Yeah. And you know, it does reduce that stress. So remembering that if you are feeling this sense of lack, you're also creating this energy of anxiety and stress. Mm. And that is not going to be beneficial to the person you're giving. And so creating an environment where you feel the abundance because you've set this budget and you've worked with it lowers your stress, lowers your anxiety, and thus creates a little bit more joy behind that giving, right? That's it. Well, and if it is the season of joy, like we hear so much of the time, if you were to think about asking, you know, the closest people to you, let's say the dozen people who know you best, what is it that would make your Christmas more joyful or more memorable? I bet you, you wouldn't ever get the answer, more expensive presents. You know, <laughs> we kind of miss that. It gets lost a little bit in the hype of it all. And how do we get back to the heart of it, the simplicity of it? Um, I think that's really at the heart of the matter here. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we wanted to also just kind of touch on some practicalities for maybe the larger families. I know that with my family, if everyone gets together, you know, there are cousins I haven't seen in a year and it's like, am I really expected to give them something? <laughs> so what we usually do is we choose one of two things. We either do kind of a, a Yankee swap. If you guys know what that is, everyone brings, you know, one gift um, and that creates a game out of it. So there's also the memory behind that. Everyone ends up getting a gift, but you know, it, more than that, you're spending time together as a family. So I love that idea for large families. And that way you're not, you know, I'm single. And if I had to give a gift to every single person in my family, it would be really overwhelming, especially with how many kids are in the picture. Um, and the other option for something like that is to do the whole name out of a hat thing and just 
being honest with your family and letting them know, hey, this is where I'm at right now. And, you know, I would prefer and I would feel more comfortable if maybe this year we just did one gift per, you know, family. And so it was just kind of like everyone got one and you're not overwhelmed with this feeling of, oh, how am I going to afford a gift for every kid here? Can I chime in on that one? Yeah, Leslie, I'd love it. So I have had that conversation. That conversation is difficult to have. Yeah. And I've had that conversation with my, with my in-laws. My family's not here, but my in-laws, um, you know, we, so we did that um, several years ago. We said, look, we can't do gifts for everybody. So now we do basically Yankee swap. I hadn't heard it called that. That's not <laughs> yeah. Do you do the one where you steal the gift from? Yeah. From, yeah. 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 So we did that for the first time last year. So yeah, that, that took a bit of, um, a bit of, you know, just being honest with family and saying, we can't do it. We can't swing it. But one of the really nice things was, is I enlisted my husband and I found that I was like apologetic about it, but mm -hmm. he was just, this is the deal we'd like to do something else. And he was yeah. so much a matter of fact that it really, it, it went over no problem. So it yeah. was, it was, uh, and, and I was thinking, and this probably is getting into Joanna's thing, but uh, something you said made me think um, what you said, if you ask what would make your Christmas better, is it more expensive presents? I think it's my need to prove I care for people by picking them the best present mm. rather than, uh, you know, any other consideration for how I spend my Christmas shopping money. Right. I'll unmute, I'll mute myself now. <laughs> no, that was fabulous. Thank you for sharing. I loved that. And you know, I'm sure Joanna's going to touch on this, but I wanted to, to bring up something that I found in a similar situation. I've also kind of felt this pride around the gifts I give, right? I've always thought, oh, I, I give good gifts. <laughs> and one year, I didn't have a lot of money, but for my mom, what I did is I got a bunch of photos that she just had in photo boxes. And I went to, you know, Target and the dollar store and I got frames and she woke up Christmas morning and I had put them on display in our living room and it cost me very little money. Right. And I had also tried to like, you know, get her a nice perfume and soaps and things like that. But I thought I wanted to give more. And she still to this day will say that her favorite gift she's ever gotten was those photos on the wall. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my God, I had spent so much money on this perfume and these soaps and the things you liked and all you really cared about were these photos, you know? Mm -hmm. But it, it actually proved to me that my pride was getting in the way when I was giving gifts, that really I should have been asking her, hey, what matters to you? And it's always been family for her. Mm. That's a beautiful story and it, it touches so deeply on um, that part of us. And I think we see it all over our culture too, Leslie, right? What car am I driving? How does my home look? Is my garden up to date? And how much do we lose ourselves and what, what, where we're at in keeping up with the Joneses if, you know, we go back to that old story. And so I love Sarah's share because it's tuning into this is what I feel like I need to give or should give to show my mom I love her, to let her know how important she is. And yet the piece that was so important related to her mom's highest value, that the, the memories coming out, the, the celebration of family. And so how do we let go of what we should give, what we should do? And, and I think that was another point that I, I was looking at my notes here to what to share. Where do I lose myself? Where do I lose myself in what I should be doing, um, where I'm overspending, overeating, over drinking, um, even over committing, you know, this, well, I should go to my husband's staff party or I, sh I was invited here, so I should go, even if your energy tank is so depleted. And just maybe asking yourself that question with each of the decisions over the holiday, because it can be so hyped and so busy. Am I losing myself a little bit? Is when I think about, should I buy this or should I attend this? Am I getting a full body yes? Or is it much more of a, a quiet no? And, you know, I think the more we can really be honest, and, and even if it is with a little bit of a, you know how busy the season is, 
and I'm coming down with a little tickle and I wouldn't want to get everybody sick, you know, that's enough of a step aside to honor yourself. And maybe what your body needs most is a, a quiet night with a book and a nice warm cup of tea. And it's as simple as that. I think so much of the time we finally get to after the holidays and we need the recoup days, you know, instead of it feeling really uplifting and how can you feel replenished and how do you maintain that joy throughout, throughout the full, well, gosh, I think Christmas starts just after U.S. Thanksgiving, you know, all the way into the new year. So it's almost like a six week chunk of time. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I love that because it's also talking about, you know, Joanna's really focusing on giving to yourself, not forgetting yourself in all of this. And I don't mean that, you know, you need to go out and buy yourself a really nice gift, but you do have to be kind to yourself mm -hmm. and forgive yourself, right? I right now have to forgive myself for maybe not having as much money as I want. Mm. But at the same time, really, really encourage myself and give myself like a huge thumbs up for being where I am, right? And I think we all need, and everyone could probably use the tip of just, hey, be a little bit kinder to yourself. You're not, no one's expecting you to fill the entire tree, you know, with gifts. What they really want from you is love. And we have kind of told, our societies have told us that, you know, love equals gifts, but that's not true. Absolutely. And I just want to make sure we come back to the group if anybody has a question or a comment before we move on to anything else. I know sometimes this can bring up some stuff for people and just want to make sure there's space for questions. Okay, looks like everybody's good. I'll, I'll never forget my, my favorite aunt growing up, and I didn't realize this until I was older, that she was always very thrifty. But I would know which present was hers because she would wrap it in comics, you know, when color comics used to be delivered in the paper. And that was my favorite gift. I couldn't wait to get to that one. Um, and just to think, you know, gosh, wrapping paper, what is it, five or six dollars a roll that gets through a, you know, a handful of gifts times however many people we give to. Sometimes it's just being creative in simple ways like that. And, that, you know, that was, I won't even say how many years ago that was, but it still stands out in my mind as something memorable and unique. Yeah. And those things add up. You know, this is why I really like creating those separate accounts for the holidays because you actually see how much you end up spending on silly stuff, mm -hmm. right? If you're using that card or if you're using cash to buy that, you'll probably be like, you know, I don't know that I do need wrapping paper. I think I could probably use a rubber stamp and stamp up some, you know, cute brown paper myself. Awesome. Um, you know, other simple stuff like this, ladies, is is food, right? I don't know about you, but we have a huge family gathering. And some of that can really add up, especially if you're tasked with hosting. Mm -hmm. So what we do now as a family is say, all right, everyone, BYOB, because some people like to drink fancy scotch and other people are fine with a two-buck chuck from Trader Joe's. <laughs> so... I'm fine with two buck chuck from Trader Joe's. So I really think, you know, also having this, let's BYOB, bring a side dish. No one's left doing all of the cooking or all of the funding for certain meals. And I think that's really encouraging because you also get to spend more time with the family. If you say, yeah, I'm going to come over a little bit early and I'll start baking the pie and, you know, we can chat in the kitchen and have a glass of wine together. That's so fun. Absolutely. Nobody wants to feel like they have to do it all. Um, you know, a trick I learned from a woman in a, the grocery store lineup was to save up all of my grocery store points until Christmas so that all the extras that we buy at that time of year, 
you know, by the end of the year, it's maybe between three to $500 sitting in points just for all the appetizers, extra guests, desserts, things that we do, and even baking supplies. So that's just kind of covered and it doesn't come all in one big lump sum. Yeah. Another um, issue around money, especially for those of us who maybe don't feel like we have as much as we want right now, is to think about gratitude and to really exercise gratitude when spending. So I have a daily gratitude exercise where I list what I'm grateful for. But especially when there's something that I feel like maybe I'm not at the level I want to be, whether it's my health or it's my financial situation or it's my personal life, I give extra gratitude there. So for example, with money, you know, you can say your three things you're grateful for, but then also be specific with money. I'm grateful for the money I have now because it allows me to, because it gives me the power to. And reminding yourself as you're spending this money on holiday gifts or holiday outings that you're grateful. Oh, I'm so grateful that this money allows me to do this. Because that, even that aura of gratitude, it will come back to you. That's, that's how the universe works. And it's really cool to witness it come back and you can say, oh, this gratitude really does change your outlook on money and how money interacts with you. It's so, so true. It's sort of, you know, where is that focus? Where are we giving more energy to? And if it's, oh, you know, the frustration and that kind of a thing versus I'm so happy I have the ability to pay for this hydro bill if it's something, you know, really boring and, and every day, but that I appreciate my lights, I appreciate, you know, the heat. And so I love that. That's, that's so true. How do we just kind of immerse ourselves in that feeling of gratitude? Yeah. Does anyone have any questions or any comments they want to share with the group? Any holiday tips? Got a few comments here about reusing gift bags that are just sitting in the closet. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, share the leftovers party on the 27th for the neighbors. That's awesome. I love that. That, I, that sounds like so much fun too. It does. More memory making, you know? Yeah. And we can all only eat so many turkey sandwiches, you know? <laughs> It's true. Very true. Yeah, and it hits the uh, three-day rule on the 27th, right? Right. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love to make turkey soup with the leftovers, Mm -hmm. so I tend to use everything from that turkey. I make turkey stock, and I just put it in the freezer because, like Joanna said, I mean, at some point, I'm just sick of turkey, but... And I know I've got turkey stock waiting for me whenever I'm ready to get back on my turkey train. <laughs> that is perfect. Wow. Well, we were doing our best to keep it to around the half hour mark just to respect everyone's time. You know, it's such a busy time of year. And certainly if you want to reach out to either Sarah or I, we'd be more than happy to answer questions and Come the new year, we're both offering uh, money-related programs, but from a little bit of a different angle. As I kind of slightly mentioned, my work is all about your inner relationship with money and how that is so much formed by your family of origin. And so the things that we get curious about is maybe whose debt are you paying inside the family system? Or what is this feeling of never enough? Because it usually doesn't live just with the money. Often it's never enough time or never enough energy. And so kind of getting to the root of that so that things can open up and you feel more free and more in the driver's seat of your own life. And Sarah, if you want to take a minute to talk a little bit about the program and how you work with people and money. Yeah, so I do kind of, um, it would be like after you work with Joanna, let's say. Uh, So it would be the practicalities behind it. How can you spend in a way that empowers you and gets you what you need and want and at the same time making sure that you've got what you need in savings and for your business? Um, You know, we have a lot of creative workshops. So we do one that's entirely on your wardrobe and you would be shocked at kind of how much that can how much you can save when you know how to make, you know, a capsule closet or something like that. So we get really fun and creative and, 
everyone kind of, we start having this contest of who's been saving or what they've been able to put that money toward. It's really fun. It is so cool. And I think what I, what I really appreciate about Sarah is our perspectives come from the same place, which is, you know, we're all here. We're all thriving. We're all, you know, moving ahead in a great way. It's just how do we make it even better? So coming from that real prosperous and abundant place to make those little tweaks and often sometimes it's just a tiny little shift of perspective or a, a small way of looking at things differently that allows things to feel much more spacious and um, really coming from that place of I have everything I need and I'm making these new decisions from that place. Because even if you just look at it from that perspective, the launching place of I, I have everything I need is very different from the feeling of mm, there's not enough and you know, what am I going to do about this? And so moving into that higher, higher perspective. And I, I really appreciate that about your work, Sarah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I would love to challenge you all and, and kind of just offer up this, you know, if you do start to spend or when you start to spend this holiday season, and if you start to feel that, I don't know, kind of down on yourself or, oh, I don't have enough, let that thought be a trigger to a new affirmation. So come up with a new affirmation about money, whether it's, you know, I have enough or money comes easy to me or I'm a money magnet, something that really stirs emotion in you and makes you feel excited so that when something comes in and that kind of dark, icky thought comes in, you've got something to combat it and say, no, 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 I'm a money magnet. I do not, I, I have plenty, right? Otherwise, that little icky feeling can just take you down a deep hole. And I think we all know what that deep hole feels like. Exactly. And I, I like that idea. It's almost like a redirect. So if there is something you really want to get for a family member and you have reached your budget, so how do you honor you in that? It's almost like it's two opposite places, but then you can open up some of the creative ideas. So mm -hmm. when you said the scavenger hunt, you know, my mom did that for us. There was three of us kids at, at the home at that time. And that is one of the most memorable Christmases I have because we were running around. We were working together to figure out the scavenger hunt and it was amazing. Yeah. Um, I actually did it for my partner. Wow. You know, he's a grown up man <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and it was amazing and he had so much fun. I don't even remember what I gave him at the end of the day. Like, you know, it, it might've even just been like a, a bottle of his favorite bourbon or something. But, you know, it was a whole day scavenger hunt that cost me nothing. And I spent a few hours creating it. But man, like by far one of the funnest gifts you can give another person is, is kind of a scavenger tra a treasure hunt. Yeah. And the gift of time and creativity. I think, you know, we keep circling back to that, but there's something that's so memorable. And I'm sure you can all think back to your Christmases. There are likely really powerful memories that are related to both that time and creativity piece when you think back and brings all those warm, fuzzy feelings that we're all desiring around Christmas time. Yeah. Well, if anyone has anything they want to share with the group, I'm sure everyone would love more tips but also we want to honor your time so if you need to go feel free yeah and what i can do um is connect sarah's email if that's okay with you sarah with the uh, with the clip and anybody who would like to reach out to her for questions you're welcome to do that and i'll do the same with mine so that we're available to you for for any questions or anything you'd like if you wanted to take this a little deeper because what i've recognized about money is it's a very kind of intimate inner peace and so sometimes in a group setting, we might be a little shy about asking a specific question. So we're available to you after hours as well. Yes, absolutely. Terrific. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Sarah. And thank you everyone for thank you. bringing your time and your questions. It was really nice to share this space with you all. Yeah. Thanks everyone. I look forward to hearing from you, Matt.